I'm down here at Clermont Fancourt School to be interrogated by some of the budding um, journalistic students here. So we've got Riley, Molly and Nathan. And it's over to you for the, f for the first question. Um, do you think building the Shard was a waste of resources and money? Um, I think it's a difficult question with these things because you don't quite know how they're going to end up. I think probably actually it's proved quite good value for money. What do you think? Um, I, they could have been using it on a lot more useful stuff than they are a giant the glass building. But do you think it looks nice? I haven't actually seen it. So you may be postponed judgment. Who's next? Molly? Um, why did you want to become an MP in the first place? Well, I was a business lawyer first in my career, then I became a diplomat in the Foreign Office, and I was always interested in public service. So when I came back, I was touring around, I spent some time in The Hague in Holland, um, I thought I didn't want to be a civil servant for the rest of my career, and I thought I'd either go back into business or perhaps have a go at politics. So it seemed a natural thing to do at that time, but, uh, you know, it's a bit of luck and it's a bit of... Um, trial and error. It wasn't something that when I was your age I was desperate to do. What do you think is the best thing that you've done for Isha and Walton? The best thing? The truth is, in, in my job, there's lots of little things that make a difference, whether it's helping someone to get physiotherapy. I had a young guy who was getting back, wanted to go back to university and had, had a really bad time of it. Um, he'd had a heart attack and a stroke at a very young age. So little ca you know, cases like that where you can get some extra healthcare help make a big difference to me. Um, I think um, there are other things at a national level, like one of the big things I'm trying to stand up for is a, uh, the, the idea of British justice. And things like extradition reform uh, has been one of the things that I've been campaigning on which has been successful. So I wouldn't say there's one big thing that I can think of, but there's lots of little things. And, and actually that's what being an MP is all about. It's, uh, you know, patient putting together the jigsaw of, 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 of little things that make a difference over the, over the long term and over the big picture. What do you think David Cameron is like? I think um, he's very sharp, uh, he's very well mannered, so when you speak to him he's always got impeccable manners. Um, I think he's a good leader, so it's very difficult, particularly in coalition with different parties in government, trying to make sure you've got a, a, a united team. Um, and I think we face very tough times, and I think he's the kind of guy that's up for a challenge. So I think he's a strong leader, and that's probably the most important characteristic in a Prime Minister. Okay. What do you do during an average day? Well, it can vary. So today, um, I went down at 7.30 to the local post office sorting agency to see what they're all doing because it's Christmas time and the postmen and women are very busy. And then I've been meeting up with a business uh, and finding out about some of the new technology that they're uh, delivering. And then today, uh, sorry, this afternoon, now coming and having a chat with you guys. So it's a, it, the one great thing about being an MP um, is all the local stuff is so varied. And it's good because it keeps me on my toes and it makes sure that I'm in touch with everything from, from business to, to what's going on in our schools. Thank you. How long have you been an MP? For about two and a half years, since May 2010. What is it like, like in the House of Parliament? Well, it's a bit like when you watch Wimbledon on TV and it looks very big, but it's actually quite small if you've ever been up and visited. And the House of Commons is a bit like that. It looks much bigger than it is. It's quite actually, uh, the atmosphere in the, in, on the green benches that you may have seen on TV is a bit like a cauldron. So um, it's quite fun. It's quite, um, you know, it, the, the, it's quite noisy. Um, and it's interesting because um, every day there's something different. Economy... There's all this stuff about free speech in the media at the moment, NHS. So no day is the same. There's no average day. Did you choose to be an MP for Isha and Walton? Well, ultimately, the people of Isha and Walton chose me. And the way we selected our candidate in the Conservative Party was that um, actually we went down to Sandown Park in Isha and we allowed the entire community to have a say in the final six candidates. So I put my name forward and I managed to get down to the final and then with a bit of luck on the day I won. But ultimately it was both in terms of becoming the Conservative candidate and then w winning the election to become the MP. Ultimately it's up to the 77,000 people who vote here. So uh, you can want to do it but they've got to want you to be the, 
the, the person representing them. Um, for the future, do you have any plans or would you like to stay as an MP? Oh, that's a tricky one. No, I'd like to stay as the MP as long as I'm wanted and as long as uh, I'm doing a decent enough job. Uh, no, I enjoy it. It's great fun. It's great being in public service. Uh, you've got the mixture of the local stuff that we were talking about earlier. And then when I go up to the House of Commons in Westminster, we're passing the laws of the land. And that's interesting, too, from a sort of big picture level. So now I'm enjoying it and I would, I, it's no secret to say I'll be standing for a second term in 2015. What did you do before you were an MP? So I started off in the city as a lawyer um, at a firm called Linklaters, big law firm, and then I spent six years at the Foreign Office doing a whole mixture of stuff from trade to war crimes. So the last thing I did at the Foreign Office was um, led up a war crimes team in The Hague where all the international criminal courts are, trying to bring people to justice who have committed really awful crimes in some of the conflict zones from Yugoslavia to Africa. So I had a bit of experience from a career before politics, before sort of dipping my toe in the in the political world. Do you have any hobbies that you particularly enjoy? I'm quite sporty, I like trying to keep fit um, as much as I can, it's obviously busy, so I train at the local boxing club in Western Green, the Foley. Um, I'll be going along there later this evening to keep fit and uh, try and keep myself in shape because it's quite actually, being an MP, it's quite a physically demanding job, so uh, it's important to try and keep healthy and fit and, and I enjoy it as well. How long do you stay in meetings? Oh, it depends. It can be very short or very long. I prefer short half an hour meetings, get the business done as quickly as possible um, and as little waffle as possible. Very rare for a politician. What do you think is the biggest problem that Ethan Walton currently has? I think we've all, the whole country's got a problem with the economy and therefore I think businesses are having a, a tough time. Um, I think the big issue the biggest issue, the biggest single issue in Elmbridge and in Surrey is that our population is living longer and therefore it's very demanding and challenging working out how to care for an ageing population, both in terms of the demands and also the costs of it. If there was one thing I think is a, a really big long-term issue for Elmbridge and, and, and my constituency, I think it's that. We've probably got time for two more. Thank you. What would you do if you weren't a politician? I don't know. I'm sort of interested in writing and, uh, you know, um, could go back to the law. I'd probably, if I did it having been an MP, I'd probably try and set up my own business. But I'm not sure what. I'd probably have to get my wife to help me because she's more business-minded than me. Um, but I'd love to be a, you know, if in another time or in the future maybe sometime, I'd like to set up my own business. What Last one, Nathan. Um, <laughs> Make it a good one. What do you think about the point that most MPs come from private schools? Well, I didn't. I went to a grammar school. Um, but I think, ultimately, people want the best person for the job. And we should certainly try and get as many uh, people from all different kinds of background into the political world. Um, but I don't have a problem with private school educated people going into the best jobs. What we really need to do is not criticise the independent schools, but actually make the state schools much better, much more competitive. So I think that's a bit of a red herring. It's, it's where you're going, not where you've been to, and, and not, not which school you've been to, in my view. Okay. Thank you all very much for your questions. Uh, very good, and I look forward to coming back and, and being interrogated by you all again in the future.